Hello! Today I would like to talk about setting up an XPS project with Xilinx. Um, you may notice I'm going to be using Windows for this presentation. It doesn't completely line up with what's in the lab, but it should get you pretty close. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to launch XPS. Uh, if you're using Unix at the command prompt, you'd want to type in XPS for Xilinx Platform Studio. Um, in my case, because I'm using the Windows version, it just happens to be what I have installed, um, I have to kind of go in a different path. In this case, I'm going to go and navigate to the ISC Design Suite and get to EDK, and then I'm going to run the Xilinx Platform Studio. Once it launches, uh, it should look pretty much the same. Xilinx does a pretty good job of keeping the Linux and the Windows versions uh, pretty comparable. So at this point, the software is loading. Program. All right. At this point, um, Platform Studio is ready to go, and I want to create a new system image, and we're going to use the base system builder for that. Now, remember, we're using the Vertex 5 boards from Digilent, from Xilinx and Digilent, and so we have to keep that in mind. So, we're going to create a new project. Um, we're going to choose where we want the project files to be stored. Um, for instance, we'll call this demo. Actually, we'll make a directory called demo. And I want to make sure that we're using the PLB system. Uh, PLB is still kind of the standard for everything in our system. Um, as we transition to newer FPGAs, we'll move to the AXI system, but for now we're still using PLB. Um, the other important part is I need to be able to connect to the peripheral repository. This is where the custom instructions are for our particular board. Since our board is not listed as an official Xilinx board, uh, we have to find this file. I've downloaded mine from the course website. I've stored it in my work directory. Um, it's the EDK XUP V5 LX110T pack. It's quite a mouthful. Um, and you want to remember that what I want to pick ends in lib. So I want this lib directory there. So now I can go ahead and hit OK and it's going to do some more analysis of all the different parts that are available on this board and it'll bring up some wizards that let me pick how I want to manage this configuration okay so now we can go through this wizard and the wizard here um, will answer some questions. On this first screen, I need to be able to scroll down and find our board. If our board is not listed among the list of boards, then this is not going to work. Um, it either means that you did not include the XUP V5 um, uh, definition, or you've got the wrong version, or you didn't choose PLB. So anything that's wrong on that first page, uh, it won't show up here. So there's only one board revision um, for our system, so that would be A. Um, really, I only need one processor, so we're going to call it a single processor system. Um, we can choose how fast we want to run the microblaze, um, if we want to run it faster or slower. I'm just going to leave it all kind of as default. Might want a little bit more memory for uh, local memory. So this is using memory on board. This is uh, on chip memory. Um, later on, we'll see we can use external memory. Um, but sometimes it's nice to have just a pile of RAM to load some small programs into without using other devices. All right, so I'll answer next. And now we can go through and pick what devices we want to include in our final design. The more stuff you have, the longer stuff takes to compile. Um, I don't need dip switches. Um, I don't need Ethernet Mac. Um, I 
I don't really need the I2C EEPROM. Um, I'll use the LEDs. I don't need the PCI bridge. Um, I'll leave the UART1 in for now. Um, and I don't need the system ACE. So we have just a few devices here. This should give us a good start. We'll hit next. Um, I'm not going to worry about caching. And on the final screen, it should allow me to um, basically accept this thing. So essentially, we're showing here the memory map for the board where it's put all the different parts. Um, and so this all looks good. So we hit finish. And there we go. So this is the beginning of the hardware side of building a system image. Um, at this point, if this was all I wanted in my system, I could now go to device configuration, update bitstream. This is where it's gonna run for quite a long time. Uh, one thing that you can do to make things a little bit better, if you have a machine that can support multiple processes, of course most can today, if we go to project, I'm sorry, if we go to um, edit preferences, under preferences we'll see simulation and we can turn on parallel synthesis. That will help a great deal. Um, parts that can be done in parallel will be. Um, so it may be able to run a bunch of these simultaneously um, when it's doing one of the stages of computation. It will save some time. Um, it doesn't make the whole thing run in parallel. The other thing that uh, may have to happen is under project options, um, there's a warning here that's treat timing closure failure as an error. There is timing information that's stored in the constraint file that's generated. And the analysis may fail even though it's still okay. And so we're going to disable that just to ensure that we get a good build. Um, and, and it's arguable whether we should actually be paying attention to that or not. Um, it's for now safe to go ahead and turn that off. So if this is really what we're going to do, we could go ahead and now rebuild our system. Um, if it isn't, if there's something else that we would like to add in here, then this is a good time to do it. So for example, um, I could browse through here and decide that maybe I would like to have a um, I squared C interface added to my board and so I could click on that and if I did it's going to say do you want to add this I'm going to say sure um, there are some parameters here that we need to sort out and we'll just leave the defaults and what we'll see here is that it's not connected to anything. So even though it put it into my design, I haven't connected it to a bus. So I want to have this guy connected to our PLB bus. And then over here in ports, we're going to see that there are some control lines that need to be connected. And I see that I have SDA in and SDA out and SDA tri-state, SCL in, SCL out, and SCL tri-state, um, GPIO, and then here's SDA IO and SCL IO. And these are the ones that I'm really after. So we're going to go ahead and make these external ports. Okay, so we haven't actually put them on the board yet. We're just saying that these devices, this device is going to use these ports. And if I look in my external ports list now, I see that I have these two guys set up here. Um, and we'll actually come back and use those in just a minute. Under addresses, um, I haven't actually mapped this into the memory map for the microblaze yet. Uh, the microblaze uses memory mapped I.O. And so 
if we're going to talk to this particular module, it needs to be in a memory address range somewhere. Now, if I use this button over here, it will generate an address. Um, kind of a randomly assigned address. I don't really care where it is. I just need to make sure that it's not overlapping with anything else. I could have manually picked one, um, but in this case, the generate addresses work just fine. So at this point now, we can actually do our update bit stream, and I can assure you this is going to run for a long, long time. Um, so for this particular, oops, I'm going to go ahead and show you one more thing, and that is I want to terminate this process. And if I want to find where the uh, um, devices are um, that are connected to the S grid C bus, what I would need to do is bring up the XUP V5 reference manual. Sorry, reference manual. And as I start to browse through here, we could look to see if there's anything that is connected with I squared C. And for instance, there's an I squared C fan controller and voltage monitor. And in fact, there's even an I squared C on the expansion header, there's an I squared C for the DVI controller. Um, so, for example, we could initiate communication with these different chips and cause them to start activating. The trick is, we just need to know how to connect them. So, for instance, if we were to do that, if we were to go and make this I squared C controller communicate with either the DVI codec or the VGA codec, uh, pin U27 is our clock and T29 is our data. So to do that, what I need to do is go to the project. I need to find the constraint file. This is very much like what we did, did with um, uh, the constraint file in ISE. And what we'll notice here is that we need to know the pin, the net name. And that's what we did when we made this an external port. So back over here into ports and I'm going to copy that name and I'm going to assign that to location this is clock and clock was U27 And then our other net would have been SDA, and that was T29. Okay, so um, at this point now, I can begin to build our image. Um, and that's it. This is how you use XPS to create a micro blaze capable design and let it build. Like I said, on my computer today, this will take about 45 minutes. Um, and I'm not going to record the session for that long. So enjoy. Good luck.